We back? back. We back, baby. We back. Man, what a card this weekend. We had some uh <laughs> some moments to say the least. Because we had at least three or four upsets, like straight up upsets. Then we had some crazy decisions. And in between some good knockouts, some great subs. All, all around, man, it was a great night, great weekend of fights, man. How you feeling, Mo? Yeah, them decisions. I'm still trying to figure out what fight was the one where they gave uh, somebody a 25 for their final score. <laughs> was it the Barbosa fight? Was it the Barbosa fight? That's actually a possibility. Barbosa he- fight might have been it. I remember hearing like scores later on after the hmm. fights were done with, like, with all the podcasts, the uh, famous people podcast yesterday. So I think that's the one. Cause I know it wasn't the Moicano fight because there's no way it could have been 25 as a score, even though that was five rounds. There's no way they gave the man five five rounds. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? There's no mm-hmm. way. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I really think it was a Barbosa fight. To be fair, Barbosa did get like dominated in that fight. We'll save that for a little later, but um yeah. Mark, how you feeling? Feeling good? So I love this card. It was entertaining the whole way through. Yes, some of the decisions were I wouldn't say the worst, but kinda questionable. I'd like to see their thought process on some of it. Yeah, they gotta show me the work too, man. I, I don't know how they made some of these numbers up. I feel like, you know how you like you know somebody and they like Christmas tree the test. Yeah, them, them scantrons and stuff. That's what I felt, man. I was like, these guys Christmas tree this shit, man. They just was like, look, A B A C A B B blood code. He 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 wins. You're like, okay, there's no letters. Like, oh, it's only numbers. Oh, uh, thirty twenty seven. All right, so you guys want to get right into the thick of things with the early prelims? Yeah, let's talk about that. All right, all right, all right. Tim Elliott against uh, Tagir Ulambegkov. I hope I said his name right. I don't want no smoke. Tim Elliott took it to him, and when I was watching it with Mark, he told me he did the Tony Ferguson strategy where you take them down, these Dagestanis, and it was very effective. Tony Ferguson once famously threatened a heavyweight that he would ankle pick him. So if Tony Ferguson is not afraid to wrestle or grapple against a former heavyweight champion, then I think his strategy might be something to look into if that's a possibility. I'm not saying that that can always work, but... It seems like everybody is just running away from these dudes, man, and trying to work on takedown defense and staying away. And obviously, you can't stay away. They're going to they, all of these guys have really good cardio. And when I say these guys, I'm talking about these Dagestanis, man, and these um all of Khabib's camp, these Russian juggernauts. Because let's be real, man, they kind of take it over, dude. Khabib. Literally walked out, then walked back in when his cousin came to fight. Mm. So, yep. I was like, oh, he just changed shirts real quick while he waited, and they had the shirt, like, at the the curtain for him? What are they doing? Because mm-hmm. he's Coach Khabib now, or Habib. Habib. K is silent. K is silent. Ah, Habib. Remember, it's silent. Oh. Facts, facts. Well, look, man, like, I, I just, I feel like this. It's a fight, and there's going to be evolution. Like, if something's working, like, really effectively, somebody's going to have to figure out a way to counter it. And that's how the game kind of evolves. It's like it, when things going to dominate for a while, somebody's going to come along and either figure out a way, uh, some new revolutionary way of, of stopping it, or you're going to have to fight fire with fire. And I think that um, attacking back or not not talking back but attack, going on the offense and just going directly at the, the the guy trying to take you down if you have the grappling credentials might be the better option 
instead of just like trying to rely on going backwards and work and hoping that your takedown defense holds up and forcing it to be a kickboxing match. Maybe the answer is, look, it's going to be a grappling match. It's going to be who's the better grappler. Don't even focus on striking at all. Put your Make your whole camp about how well you can um, wrestle offensively, obviously defensively, and jiu-jitsu. So your submission game. Well, in that fight, I think Tim Elliott looked good the first two rounds, right, Mark? Yes. Then Very the good. third round, uh, Ulam Bekov started coming back, and he was doing really good. Like he finally, I guess he woke up. I don't know, jet lag, something. And well, once the decision came out, you could see in the Dagestani corner's eyes the shame, disgust, and how mad they were at the loss. So oh, during the fight. That you had too. Habib raging in the corner. That too. So these guys are going to come back with a better game plan. You know? Because they're like, oh, somebody might have figured it out. So now we got to change something. I'm actually surprised it's taken this long to come up with a strategy close to that, though. Because this is the standard old uh, counter against wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Wrestlers are terrible on their back. We haven't seen much of the Dagestanis on their back because no one tries to take them down. They're so afraid of the ground game so that we don't sad. see it. One on so, Saturday. Yeah, one. One is the only one that tried it, and one has talked about it. But He's crazy, though, it, according to He is crazy. Else. He is crazy. I, I'm a huge fan of him, and I think he's crazy. Me too. But in a good way. <laughs> Me too. But yes, the Dagestanis are good... And the clinch against the cage, that's where they do all their takedowns. They are terrible traditional wrestlers. And I mean that with all the respect. They're just terrible traditional wrestlers. You don't expect them to take you down in the middle of the cage, double leg you, single leg you there. They always push you to the cage and take you down. See how they are on their back. Take them down in the middle and see what they do. Well, you know what? I I, I don't want to take away from your point. I want to, if I can, add to that. I think that sometimes the perception for fighters is if you have a strength, like an overwhelming strength, they usually try to go away from that. Like if you're really good, like, like I mean, and it makes sense. You know, like if you're really explosive, they try to drag you into deep water, not just match your explosion. You know what I mean? Like if, or if you're um, a, kind of, a kind of guy that has suspect cardio, Usually they try to, like, again, drag you in deep water, see if your cardio is improved or not, and then um, go from there. But I don't know if this whole fight fire with fire strategy is anything revolutionary or even that it even works. Because the only thing we do know is that that sample size of one, Tim Elliott, happened to work this one fight. But I don't think it's like a chink in the Dagestani's armor, however... It might be something to, for that other gr- good grapplers or excellent grapplers might take on. Because one thing that surprised me about Justin Gaethje versus um, Habib was Justin didn't use any wrestling at all. Uh, like Offensively, he just basically was like content to make it a kickboxing match and, tr- and try to keep the fight standing with his defensive wrestling. Which is most, which is what he's done his whole most of his UFC career. So it's not like he's changing anything, but in my mind, someone with that, with those credentials, like you know, he has the background, you know, he can wrestle, you know, grappling's in there. Why not give it a shot? But like you said, maybe this might be the spark, though. This that that, that might have caused some people to go back and go look. Like maybe we should rethink how we are trying to approach these guys. Because a lot of these guys are getting avoided. Because one, it's going to be, you know it's going to be a long, grueling fight. And you're most likely going to lose. So it's not like an attractive option for most people. But then there are other grapplers like jiu-jitsu aces. They're not the typical wrestling types. They don't mind those matchups. They don't mind being on their back and defending and going for subs and stuff. But 
the Dagestanis are good at grab. They're, they're good at submission defense and good at submission offense as well. They're not like trash traditionally when you say about their overall grappling game because they come from a, like a, a heavy grappling background. It's not just wrestling, but it's, it's application in mixed martial arts that matters, right? Because mm-hmm. you can be like a top tier wrestler, but this ain't a wrestling match. You ain't wearing, you're not pinning somebody and getting, you know, points for t- that, that takedown. You have to do more than that. Well, I was only saying that they're not great at double legs and they're not going to attack you in the center of the cage 90% of the time. That's all I meant by they're, they're, they're not great wrestlers. They are great grapplers. They're not great wrestlers that I've seen. Let's go on and talk about the other Dagestani, the first cousin of Habib Nurmagomedov. Umar Nurmagomedov. Hey, y'all go ahead. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. But yes, Umar Nurmagomedov. Ooh, I said that so good. Tell me I didn't say it good. I said it good. You did well. I said it good. I said it like I said it like a thousand times. <laughs> Yo, this dude. Been practicing? No, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> this dude got all the kicks. We watched it. You saw it. He got some yeah. kicks, and he was doing it on Brian Kelleher. He's not a bad guy. He's a good fighter. He ain't no scrub. No, not at all. First cousin Habib, man, anyone by submission, not a kick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. The, I think this this one also speaks to the evolution of the Dagestani fighters. Yes. You know, Yes. because we are starting to see more Dagestani fighters or this style of fighter starting to come out with actual striking skills. Um, I'm going to throw shade to Habib real quick, just a little bit, because, you know, one of the biggest downfalls, in my opinion, of the most dominant Dagestani there is, is his striking was always terrible. Some people were saying that he has good striking and it's not as bad as people think. And I say that people were too afraid of his wrestling, so his striking made him look better. This is actually good technical striking, especially with the kicks and a new evolution. And like they said on the uh, broadcast team, his coaches, they're very, 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 very excited for when Ever, his boxing gets as good as his uh, kick striking. Because Jesus. Oh. I mean, he's a Nurmaga Medov. Oh, said it again. Good. <laughs> but, uh, so that means he wrestled bears growing up as well. Am I right? Correct. Okay. Okay. So his grappling, his defense should be at least good. He shouldn't be taken down because if you could stand up with bears. <laughs> trying to take you down somewhere, you should be good, right? First cousin. Right. But bro, the, the question mark kicks. You saw you saw that? The Oh yes. The curve? Oh my goodness. Crisp. Well I seen this dude. I was like, I seen this dude fight before. But I didn't see it. This one I saw it. He's good. He's good. He's good. I, I'm uh, uh isn't um I'm isn't intrigued to see from, his next fight. Isn't a beat from that from Dagestan too? I believe so, but he's uh he's on the milk carton right now, man. He's missing. No, the only reason I brought him up wasn't is because he has creative kicks too. Oh yeah, he was he was uh very technical. That's why I was like excited for him because he's a featherweight as well. But then I know his weakness is definitely cardio. Unless he's went on like a hiatus to get his cardio up, who knows? From what I well, understand, his hiatus wasn't because of him. It was because nobody would accept fights. So he was just like, if no one wants to fight me. No, Alex. Remember, he was tied up with a year for like a year or two. Yeah, it was same thing with like Tony Ferguson and uh, man, is that the the problem, bro? 
like a Mexican fighter and a Dagestani fighter just can never link up? Is that the thing? Yeah, I mean, never you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is the beat from Dagestani or is he just Russian? I thought he's from Dagestan. Cause you know, you know I how it is know. with Russians, bro. They're like, there's Belarus, and then there's somewhere else, and there's somewhere else. It's like I'm this, but I'm this also. Well, I mean, if you're in mixed martial arts, it, it makes sense that you would go to um, Dagestan if and train with them if you're from Russia. Kind of like if you live in the U.S. and you want to go to ATT or you want to go to, you know. Any any one of the major camps in the U.S., you don't have to be from there to train there. Yeah, yeah, but he never even trained over there. He, he was uh, with uh, what Frankie Edgar and them. Yeah, the Frankie Edgar camp. He's New Jersey boy. He's with Edson Barboza and them. So you got Abe oh. looking over here, like on the uh, boardwalk and shit. Mm-hmm. Jersey Shore vacation. <laughs> That's what you telling me. <laughs> with yes. Abe Lincoln? No, <laughs> no. Baby Abe. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's let's get to the prelims. But yeah, shout out to the Dagestanis. We might see some good stuff from them going forward. Besides Islam Makachev, is is Umar fifty five as well? Forty five. Featherweight. Okay. That okay. Dude, that's why I said I like featherweights. I pay attention to them. All right. Uh, you guys want to go into this? Uh, Marina Morose against Mariah. Agapovo. Yeah, we can do that one. We can do that one for sure. I'm gonna blame y'all for not watching it because I was talking. Oh, multitask player. I'm. Multitask. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna blame uh good old Kevin. <coughs> yeah. Hey yo. Yeah. Bro, yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, I'm gonna blame <laughs> him because he started talking to me about all kinds of stuff, and I was like, yeah, man, yeah. For real. Yo, uh, well, this is one of the fights that I bet on. I had um, Maria Akapova, I don't know how to say it. Akapova, doesn't matter. That ticket got torn up anyway because she gone, she got beat. Um, I was really impressed with the Ukrainian. I didn't see much of her before the fight. And I became a fan after, man. She, in, in fact, when she walked in, I was like, damn, she looks healthy. Like, she looks strong for this division. So I was like, even though I felt good about, um, ah, oh, oh, God, that can't, <laughs> Agapova, I felt good about her. And I still, I'm, I'm not, I'm not giving up on her yet. I felt good about her chances of winning this one. I was much more impressed with her opponent, and walking away, I became a fan of hers as well. So, yeah, the the smaller iron lady here, she uh killed the demon slayer, and you know what? She looked good doing it. I don't think she had a lot of trouble with this fight at all. Uh, Agapova tried to carry on the the volume but it didn't do much for her to be honest it it seemed pretty one-sided for the most part to me but a good matchup and an interesting fight yeah i i I really so going in like i said i thought i had like a pretty big edge with this one i thought i got like a good deal but apparently they got it right and they knew so girl, she's the like I said, the baby iron lady, Miss Ukrainian Iron Lady is uh she's 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 sharp, man. hmm She's sharp. I was getting a lot of um young J check vibes from Agapova. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I'm that's how I'm gonna say it until I know how to say it right. So fuck it. I thought she was um She's because she's pretty sharp in her striking in her first few fights that I saw her in. Like her kickbox is legit. I think she's like a Muay Thai, has a Muay Thai background. And her she's usually pretty sharp, but um she's starting to, you know, show a little bit of weakness in these dog fights when they get into like dirty grappling and stuff. So that might be a part of her game she might want to look into. Might be just opponent specific, or maybe just 
how some of the fights came up, but who knows? But yeah. I think uh the new Iron Lady might be somebody to watch for. Yeah, I think uh Akpova is two and two in her UFC career right now, is that right? Yeah, I think she won her first couple. I know she came out kind of hot, and then she lost back to back. No, I think she she won, lost, won, lost. I think really? she's back and forth. Yeah. Okay, I may I might be wrong. I didn't. I'm definitely. I the first time I got caught win of her, she won, and it was like she looked impressive. I, no, her I, last matchup, she she looked very impressive. I remember that fight. I think it was a fight night at. Uh, the apex and she looked very impressive on that fight and i think she got a submission win if i remember correctly yo so let's uh just glance over this nikolai against uh nezuku boo i don't know if i said his name right but let's just like glance over it it was a split decision nezuku got point deducted could have been a draw. I don't know. I'm not a Another judge. dead Kennedy. Yeah. So yeah. let's go to the Marina Rodriguez fight and Yaon Shao Yu. Non. However, hold on. Your name. Wait, wait. Before we go to Yan Shannon. Yan Shannon. Um... <laughs> Yan Shannon. Okay. 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 Before we go to Yan Shannon, I will say this, man. They. So my my thought was on the um, on fouls. Any foul. I think you get the we should get the warning in the locker room, and it should be automatic point when you do any foul, whether it be groin strike or eye poke, because like it, it compromises the fighter so much. What about grabbing the cage? You should know the rules. If you don't know the rules, then you you gonna learn by getting points deducted. They yeah, should they tell you a lot. You'll learn. Like it should, it should be like no grace period. No like, all right. I warned you. Warn you. Warn them in the locker room, and then after that, it's an automatic point. And I know I understand accidents happen, but this is too much of the probing with your hands out. You, if you want to eliminate it, make it a hard rule. I don't disagree with that. Just because it's become so apparent that so many fighters do not care knowing the fact that they're going to get just warned a thousand times. It's so rare to see points taken away nowadays that I think they do need to become more stern about it. At the very least, you get one warning in the cage, and everything after that is just point deducted, whether it be a nut kick or whatever. Because accidents happen. I get it. Accidents do happen. But especially when, like, cage grabbing... You see a lot of people grab the cage, and that's nothing new. That's nothing, like, I get an accident can happen when you're, like, falling onto your back, but some people blatantly grab it, knowing that the ref's just going to kind of go smack their hand a little bit. And same with eye pokes. The probing with the hands, like you said, it's so common and apparent that it's just people don't care about getting a point deducted because they never take them. You know what? I, I think they don't care about not getting a point taken because I mean, they don't, it's not that they don't care about getting, not getting a point taken. I think it's because they compromise their opponent so much that it doesn't matter. Like you get poked in the eye, even if you get your time to recover, that eye is still compromised. Mm-hmm. And that's a, that, I think that's a legit strategy some of these people are using. They're just like, fuck it. Like, okay, worst case scenario, I might get a point taken, but if, if I finish him, does that fucking matter? I mean, we're not going to the judges' scorecards. I finished him. You know what I mean? He can't see now out of that right side. So I can just throw more right side strikes, and that's now compromised. I feel like the strikes that can compromise, a, I mean, the fouls that can compromise a fighter should be auto points. Kick, getting kicked in the balls. I mean, look, placement. I don't care if it's an accident. Place your kicks better. Practice more. If you're not good at kicking, don't kick. <laughs> We've also had fighters in the past admit that they kick somebody in the nuts just so they could get a rest. Facts. Like, I mean, it's, you know they're doing it. I mean, it, the thing that that blows my mind is, like, um, they give them such grace, period. Such grace with, like, okay, you get a warning. All right, you get, I'm like, look, you should get a, I understand giving a warning for a fence grab. I understand giving a warning for grabbing the gloves or grabbing shorts. 
I can understand that, giving a warning for that and not being so quick on the trigger with the point. But getting kicked in the balls, getting poked in the eyes or any kind of foul like that or getting eye gouge, getting like whatever old girl was doing when she was getting a submission attempt, right. that's that's different. That's not the same as like, okay, that, uh, oopsie, my bad. That, that oopsie, my bad, like oops. can – yeah, you know what I mean? That can fuck yeah. up the other fighter for the rest of the fight. Oops, my bad. Yeah. yeah my bad. I, I didn't mean to dig into your eyes. or I mean, bro, close your fist. You want to probe? Probe with your jab. You want to probe? Get better at distance management. You know what I mean? Like, use feints. Yeah. There's ways you can, there's ways you can tactically be better at getting at using distance at getting a gauge for distance than sticking your fingers out and trying to like probe with your fingers. There's a better way. And the reason why the one of the main reasons why they they don't use it is because they don't have to. Like they know that they have that grace of like the referee will be like, look, keep your hands in, it's your first warning, and they do it again, like, okay, look. You poked him in the eye, now he got a timeout. You might get a point, you might not, depending on the referee. It depends. It's too much left up for interpretation by the person. You want to take all that out. You want the stuff to be clean and cut. You don't want interpretation. You want to be like, look, you did that. That's a foul. That's a point. In my opinion, because it, I think it makes the fight better. And then I think it'll it'll close the fist more. Guys won't be sitting there like with their fingers out and doing all this woo 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 sha bullshit. They'll just keep their fists closed because they don't want that point taken. And for those decision fighters, that's then you you stuck in the mud, not nephew. If you, I, know, I know you want to go for your, you want to just be a wet blanket and run the timeout and be the cardio king or whatever you call your strategy. But now you fuck around and get a, a point deducted that changes how you have to fight. And it's better for the fans. It's better for the people who want to watch, though. We came for a fight, not for your strategy. Y'all know I get it. You want to win. I understand. Congrats on your win. You should do that. But the people who paid to watch, we watching for a fight, bro. I got a little emotion. I got emotional about that. That happens sometimes. I'm a little. I'm just like. I just want the purity to be there. You feel me? Like I don't want it to be. Yeah. There's a lot of other options out there that the UFC doesn't want to take, like using the gloves of uh, Whitman. Yeah, Trevor Whitman's, Whitman's gloves with the that um, causes your fingers to naturally. Because if you hold your hand out, bro, your your fingers aren't doing that. You know what I'm saying? You gotta do that. You gotta extend your fingers out. Right. Those gloves also cause your fingers not to extend, unless you're forcing them to extend. Right. They they give a little pushback. Bellator already has some like that, which it's not as prominent in Bellator with eye pokes. Does still happen, just not as prominent. You know what? I I, I used to think that like maybe it was just lack of. Like they, they, there was like lack of care or neglect. Like maybe the company just doesn't care that much about that part. But then again, I think that like those moments that are created in that does cause a little bit of drama. And they might just be like let it ride just because of that. You know what I mean? Like, cause it's like, I mean, I, if they cared, they would do something about it. If they wanted to like, if they for real, if that was a point of emphasis, they were like, look, we don't, we want eye pokes out of the game. They can buy those the the Trevor Whitman. They can just get the Trevor Whitman gloves or whatever, right? Or their own design of a glove that's closed that can. Um, he trademarked curve. it, bro. Like you know what yeah, I mean? It ain't, ain't happening. Well, so, so, well, yeah. There's there's other solutions too. Like I said, like they can make it more strict. They can be like, look, it's auto point. To be fair, they did try to deal with Trevor Whitman to get those gloves. They just couldn't come to an agreement because the UFC wanted rights to them completely. And Trevor Whitman was like, "No, I created them. You're gonna bank. I'm gonna bank off this too, not just you." Yeah, I mean I, that's understandable. I don't, Which I don't, is understandable. Yes. Yeah, that's understandable. But don't why you? they can't put away some of that development money that they use for so many other things to just create a new fucking glove? That's like, come on now. I they mean, have like, all the access. To hey, 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 let's get back on track, man. We just right. we just took a whole left turn. I start always. talking about like gloves. Come on, man. And that's cool. Man. That's cool. It's cool. It's let's cool. Just, let's talk about this uh, strawweight fight for probably the next title 
contender. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Let's get there, man. Let's get there. I think I accidentally um, got robbed. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> like I, uh, I, I was. I pretty much have not bet against. Um, Mar- is it Mariana or Marina? How you say? How you say? How you say her name? Yes, I'm gonna go is with it, Marina. Yeah, I, I haven't bet against her her entire career. She's been crushing for me, but for some reason, I was like, you know what? I'm feeling Yan Shao now. I think she has a legit shot here. And I picked her. I thought she might have like got robbed there. I mean, I don't think it was like something egregious. I thought it could have been a closer. Sh- um, I thought the judges could have had it closer. And I, I can see the case for um, uh, Mariana winning, but like uh, Marina, whatever. I can see her winning, but I thought that uh, Yan did enough. Uh, Sha- Yan Shannon did enough. It's a coin flip. Coin flip decision, I feel. 100%. And to be honest, I did TikTok officially choose Rodriguez, but for a while, yes, you did too. But for coming up to this fight, I was all about Jan. Jan, I, I had her, I was like, you know what? People are counting her out. She's a lot better of a striker than people actually give her credit for. She has a real legit shot in this fight. And she proved what I was... De- defending for all that time she i personally think that rounds one and three are pretty obvious uh one yan won easily and three rodriguez won but two is where it gets really hairy i do think that shannon did do enough and outstruck rodriguez in the second round to where she should have got two to one but it was close enough to where I'm not mad at the decision. A split decision does seem right to me. So it is what it is. Judges, bro. You don't know what these judges are thinking. I'm salty because I lost. <laughs> I know I know why you salty. <laughs> you had a rough rough going on this card. But No, not really. Does Marina well, get a title beginning. shot with this one? After uh Carla? Or does she have to I, fight one more? Is she, she might next in to, line? She might have to fight one more or make weight for that one with Carla. When is the Carla fight? Oh. Do we know wait, yet? Wait, wait, wait. Straw weight. No, no, no. This, this is the right division. She will fight Rose pending on the winner of uh, Rose versus Carla. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, she, she, who else is doing something at the top of the division? Nobody. The only person other than her making noise right now is Mackenzie Dern, but she got an L to Rodriguez. She, she already beat me. I believe that was her last fight before this one. Yeah. Right. So there's really no one else. She could fight Zhang Uh I think she's going to be locked up with uh, young Jay Check. Is what I understand is the fight they're trying to make with them. And Jacek's trying to come back, and that's the fight that they're trying to remake, which I'm it all was a fucking it. banger the first time. I'm all for it. <laughs> I'm all for it. That was the fight before COVID like popped off, so I'm all for it, bro. <laughs> Please. I 100% think that the breakdown is going to be Carla's got the next one. Marina's got, after that, the winner of that fight. And then the winner of Young Jacek versus Wei Li gets it next. After that. I like that. But that's predicting far into the future and a lot of shit can happen. So <laughs> then tell us. Yes. I think for... Jerry could go on a uh, little streak and then be right there in the mix. Oh, yeah. I think for um, Rodriguez, though, I think for uh, she might be like an alternate to that title fight. She can be able to just like sh- um, like make weight and then be a standby in case something falls through on one of the fighters. In case Rose That's or um, like Rose or um, Carla have to pull out. Carla might get a stomach from a stomach ache from all those cookies. Never know. Stop it. Never know. All right. $10, so dollar ice cream. Let's let's move on to. Uh, was was this the lightweight debut of uh, Jalen Turner? I think so. I think this was his, uh, his 
Uh, wait, wait, wait. Lightweight? Yeah, he was a welterweight mm-hmm. previously. What? Trust me oh. when I say I saw him get messed up by, by uh, Vicente, Vicente. Lupe. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Look, in this fight with uh, Jamie Malarkey, Malarkey was on fire, too. He came in with some steam. So... I was um I this is one of my um wins on the card. I took I had Turner and I felt good about it. I'm like this dude at six foot three in the one hundred and fifty five pound division, he's gonna have a huge reach and striking advantage over most opponents. Um I look at and look at the division, most of most everyone's like grapplers. They're all like five foot ten and grapplers. Most of them. So he gonna have to get some ground, some either some jujitsu, because he got long limbs. He can like you know use them on the ground on his back, or some hella takedown defense. And he has a decent shot of making some noise if he can do those things. But that's a long way away, nephew. I mean, I'm just now looking at his record because I'm going to be honest. I was ignorant coming into this one about Jalen Turner. I've heard the name before. Didn't know much about him at all. I knew a little bit about Malarkey because of recency bias, and I just saw him destroy somebody. I don't even remember who he was fighting, but so I had a little bit of recency bias there. But looking back at Turner's record in the UFC, at least, he's he's not bad, He's been right? making waves. And he has decent names on there. I mean, the only big fight that he really had was uh, Vicente Luque, which as a debut fight to the UFC is harsh. <laughs> yeah. That shit was that, messed that's up. Harsh. Bro, it's messed up. <laughs> you can't get welcome to the UFC by like one of the divisions elite. That's like right. getting like Hayes to join like a fraternity or something. You know what I mean? Like, hey, here you go, bro. <laughs> fight hey, this killer like- right here. I'd like to know if that was like a short notice, like, hey, we need someone to cover this, so that's why I got my shot type deal. Because, I mean, if that's the deal, then 100% you should have went for that fight. I, but I other than recall. that... It was a while yeah. ago, bro. It was like three or four years ago or something like that. Well, I mean, well, think about it this way. It's the hurt business, so it don't even matter. It's not like you can avoid it. Like, yeah. Well, yes, but... <laughs> When you're a new guy coming in from other company or other promotions or even the you know regionals, you can lose a lot of steam by going straight to the top and looking or getting embarrassed. Getting knocked out in the first round on your first fight against the elite doesn't look good against you because people think that the matchups are supposed to be pretty close. I don't know. Unless they're short here's, here's, here's the thing. Here's why I don't I can't really I don't really subscribe to that. It's because if you lose to a guy that's like already ranked above you and he's expect, expect to win, then I mean it's just like, all right, well, you you that was an expectation. But if you come in there and you dominate, you steal all that guy's shine and like supercharge your career. So you go from being a relative unknown to now you're making 40k a year, 40 40, 40 maybe a fight. And the way these guys got to scrape and claw, man, you can, you got to bet on yourself and take that shot. I agree to the to to like an extent. I'm just saying that's a that was just a big fucking yeah. Welcome yeah. to the UFC type thing. Yeah. And they they did turn down his competition since then. Not saying it's been terrible competition, but it's more unknowns and other people gathering their way, but he's he's shining in them. He's getting a lot of finishes. Mostly a second round finisher. Hey. You guys ready swap. to get on that uh main card though? Yeah, let's jump to the main. Alright, Sergey Spivak pieced up Greg Hardy real quick. Yeah. Done Dada. Greg Hardy's probably gonna be uh removed from the UFC. It was a good experiment. I don't know if he'll be removed. Um, he's still a name, and he's a heavyweight, so there's always room because he's on the main card. So there's always room for undercard events where you can just put a heavyweight on it, um, and he can just be a opponent for somebody. Do you so, guys feel uh, that uh, Rodriguez Shannon fight should have been on the main card instead? 
One hundred percent. It's a heavyweight. But it's a heavyweight. You you want to open a card with like you want to have some heavyweight action on there. I, I think that they're they're obviously the better. They're the higher rated fight, right? Like this number four and number three with um, Rodriguez and Yan Shanan. That was number four versus number three, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. In the in that division, and I agree. Like I think it's I, I agree with you from the standpoint of is that fight a better fight for the overall like rankings? Absolutely, it should be in the main card over that. But for viewership and fan viewership, I think having those having a heavyweight fight takes precedence over almost any other weight, just because it's a heavyweight fight. And usually those don't last that long. It's usually pretty quick. This is the face of knowing the casuals got that one. Right, right. Yeah. This is, that's a casual uh, move. Because you're, you're, when you're paying 70 bro, you're paying $80 to watch, like, an event, you want to see people get knocked the fuck out. You want to see two big dudes getting it on, like, somebody get smoked quickly. You want to see something memorable. You know what I mean? Something, it's an experience. It's not just a sport. So you want to see something crazy. You're not really caring about some. I mean, you do care, and you want to see the smaller um, competition. This is me thinking for like what the casuals think when they see it. Because yeah. I think about myself as a younger fan. When I was like, when I first started watching, I wanted to see like the crazy shit. Hold on, hold on. Well, I remember back in the day, we always wanted motherfucking Tito to win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we always wanted Tito to win, and he was getting pieced up by Chuck Liddell, and we're just like, how's this fucking guy always winning? This guy with the mohawk right here. Tito was the shit back then. This guy with the mohawk right here. Whatever the fuck (laughs) his dance was. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? I think it was a chainsaw. I don't know what he was doing, bro. All I know is you go, ah, and then, you know, (laughs) I don't know. He just knocked out everybody except for Rampage. I mean, he was built to last like Duralast. He ain't knocked out Rampage, off. though. Bro, that commercial, <laughs> though. That commercial was That's what I was going for. Yeah, when he punched the, uh, like, fucking, the wrecking ball. He headbutted the wrecking ball, and he punched something else. I forgot what it was. Well, props to the Iceman, though. Iceman, he he was a pioneer for the UFC. Oh, he yeah. was one of the first multi-platform stars of the UFC. Like, if you saw Iceman, you knew, oh, shit, that's that guy. Mm-hmm. Same with Tito yeah. though. Tito had the blonde hair with the fire trunks, and you saw him. Yeah. You knew what time it was, bro. The Huntington Beach, that. the Huntington Beach bad boy. He digged the grave though. That boy had the. He fucking. Oh my god. So, all right, all right. No, no more nostalgia. On that. No One more, more nostalgia. thing on that. One more of that. Do you think that personalized shorts are gonna make a comeback? On the height of Bryce Mitchell getting hurt, his camo pants. It might be so. like a print. You know what I'm saying? Not like. But I'm a, good with that. Not a print that they can profit off of. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like they're not going to be NASCAR any, anymore like they used to be. Know. But it's going to be like a, a design or a print or something. You know what I mean? But still, I mean, I think that brings back, you know, you're always going to know Bryce Mitchell for those camo shorts. Uh, back in the day, like if Chuck Liddell was still fighting, give him some of those fucking frosted whatever yeah, the ice, ice marks shit, on yeah. him. The ice I, man I shit think on there. I think eventually some fighters will have those. Izzy might have some anime type shit on his his, his pants. You know right. what I'm saying? His compression shorts or something. Yeah, what was more iconic than uh, Anderson Silva's like uh, yellow and black killer B thing? Like that was dope. Mm-hmm. Always, you always yeah. knew Anderson was in the yellow for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, all right. Move on well, moving on, we got we got the debut of the mouth from wherever he's from, Kevin Holland, Trailblazer against the Brazilian cowboy Alex Oliveira. That was a wild scrap, dog. That did Very not go. Job. That did not go how I thought it was gonna go. Heck no, not at all. I it thought, was a listen, lot calmer, bro. I <laughs> thought that sh- I thought that was gonna be a one-sided beatdown. I thought um, Kevin Holland walk in there, 
starch fucking um, Oliveira, like first round. I get paid. Everybody happy. But no, no, no. You can't count uh, Cowboy out, bro. No, never. Never. I can the, do what the fuck I want to do. <laughs> I thought it was done. Well, obviously, you can't. <laughs> obviously. Bro. I thought I thought it was a done deal. Brazilian Cowboy probably, like, he read some Instagram posts or something. I was like, oh, word? Is that, that's how they think they're going to do me? That man got paid for all them kids. <laughs> he got the, kids? How many kids he got? Like 12, 15. Do you see this cowboy? What do you mean you, he got kids? He looked like he had 12 kids. That means I'm good at two things, fighting and fucking. Yes. <laughs> and he's good at both. <laughs> hey, that was a scrap, man. To, to be real, like, um, like I said, I thought it was going to be easy. He easy got the with. first round easily. Man, like on scorecards. Yeah. First round, like, Oliveira. Bro, he came to scrap. I was like, oh, shit. That put me, um, but I had me nervous because that was my biggest bet of the card. That, I thought that was going to be a scrap. Me. Yeah. So, Oliveira always comes to scrap. That's why he's known as the other cowboy. And he's got the same mentality. Anybody, anywhere, anytime. And he comes to bring it no matter if he's in the fight or not in the fight. The only thing that surprised me was Kevin Holland was slow starting and flat footed to start that fight, which was surprising to me. And when he cranked it on, I mean, obviously he got the finish when he cranked it on, which was towards the end of the first round and then he carried it into the second. But that was a fucking great fight. And I think it was a great introduction to him into 170 and proves that Kevin Holland is a natural welter- welterweight and will do well in this division. That's He's where he big belongs. too, man. He's tall for a welterweight. And that's what what gave me so much like that's why I thought he would just steamroll because he's a good he's a he's a really good middleweight. And he's going I mean, he's going to get I mean, as far as his strike is concerned and his power is concerned, I thought he would be able to like just if he can translate that power, which I mean, I don't see why he couldn't. It's not like he was um someone who cut a ton of weight for middleweight. In fact, like he was a very small middleweight. So I figured I felt like his power transfer would be easy um, from going from 185 to 170 pounds. But if you remember, he knocked out Buckley, Joaquin Buckley, with the, the guy who, you know, got the the crazy spin kick. Like, you know what I mean? Like he's a dynamic striker. I mean, as far as power is concerned. No, uh, the worst Kevin was uh, knocking out the Gator. Um, Jacare. Jacare. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, he knocked out. Jacare off his back, off his butt, like yeah, right. With some bullshit. That's what I'm saying. Like I think I felt like Cowboy would be in for it because he's going up against so much a guy that's so much bigger than him. You know what I mean? That's why I thought he was just steamroll. He would just get caught, hurt, and then no, no. And then apparently, Kevin Holland has really good jujitsu. We haven't really gotten to see too much of it yet, but Travis Luter, uh, black belt, right? Yes, and that's that's a great fucking black belt to hold. Is Travis Luter black belt? Ain't no McDonald's yeah. gift shit, right? No, <laughs> ain't no kids meal fucking prize or nothing like that. You didn't get a purple belt for never even attempting a takedown. <sighs> so why are you, um, you bringing up old shit? Yo, the, here's something we we want to introduce. I think it'd be um, we should. Do a little stock market action and talk about the risers and fallers. You know what I mean? And and we can all pick one from each level. I mean, from each category. But some like, like I think let's so we'll start off with the uh, the raging bulls and the falling bears. So you we'll pick one fighter later in the show um, who we think stock is on the rise. Um, now, it may be a division change. It may be just a win streak, but their stock is moving up. And somebody who was, you know, once maybe doing doing good, but now their stock's on the decline. So we'll call those fallen bears. But let's get back to the main card action, man. All right, so Kevin Holland, I don't know where he goes from there, but hopefully, did he get ranked in welterweights? Let me check. I'm checking currently. No, he is not ranked. 
Okay, that's cool. Share. Uh, Man, there's a lot of killers in top 15 at welterweight. Mm-hmm. You look at that whole list. That's a murderer's row. So who um who do you think? Do I you think I don't know, man. Sh- Shavkat? That's that's ooh. If he beats him, that's that's a well deserved victory. That's huge. That would be yeah. um that's huge. And if he, I mean I feel like he he can be on a short list of contenders for the title in this division, so because if you think about it like all the guys that are at the top they're all either competing already. Yo, that top five or have, is vicious. Or they have yeah, already competed. They've already fought for the title, if you think about it. And some people twice. To me, the well, top eight is vicious. And 170? Yeah, 170? The top eight is vicious. Mm-hmm. And then after that, it's just they ain't no chumps. Chemayev, he's at no. 11, but but still. Where's Shaka? Yeah. 15. Okay. It's like yeah. literally like there ain't no chumps in that top fifteen. Is Holland ranked at all? No. Not yet. Not currently. He was ranked at uh middleweight. Seven, right? Um I don't think he was that high. I think he was what, fourteenth? I think they had him at fourteen in middleweight. Fourteen? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you know what? That's probably why Chris Wyman got moved up. They took him out of the rankings. Mm. So they moved him up. That's why Chris Weidman jumped up to 14. Okay. So, so Kevin me, Holland, they got to fight somebody in the top 15 of uh, welterweight. That's probably next yeah. fight. Probably yeah, Jingle Lang or Pazanibio. I was thinking Leach or Jeff Neal. Ooh, Both are interesting one. fights to me. That's a good one. That's a real good one. Yeah. I think um, you, Mo nailed it too with uh, Pazanibio. I think that'd be a good one. I so I think I don't think he should fight Chef Cop, bro. Not no, yet. I don't. I don't think that's the right matchup just yet. Shavkat, honestly, fifteen for Shavkat is seems really low to me. I would easily put him higher. Uh, I don't. I think he's, I think he's fine. I mean, I, he, I like Kiesa versus uh, Shavkat. I I, I do like Shavkat as a prospect, but I mean, I feel like he's still pretty unproven. Shavkat like versus Kiesa, bro. Yeah, I'm. I'll subscribe to that because, like I said, I think he needs to be higher. So, therefore, that would put him in top 10 if he wins it. What I do like you have, him in that fight. What do you have against Kiesa? Who, me? Yeah, you know, like, why do you want to see him get hurt? I don't have anything against Kiesa. I love Kiesa. But I like him on the desk. interesting matchups are interesting matchups. Are, are you trying to Are you trying to fast forward him to the, the permanent desk job? <laughs> Not trying to fast forward him. I think he's a competitor. I don't think that he's champ. That's uh, all. Yeah, I don't see him as a champion. I see him more. I love his uh, desk work. Him as a commentator is fantastic. He's not done fighting though. I think he could easily hover around the top ten. Well, I mean, just don't say nothing about his mama, bro. He'd be all right. I'm not. Nah, him. say it. Bring that fighter out of him. I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, let's move on to the next one. Then that's the next uh, fight in the heavy in the um, main card. Ooh, this is a great one. Mm-hmm. Edson Barbosa versus Bryce Mitchell. This is my guy on the rise. Dang spoilers! Spoiler alert! <laughs> that's my guy on the rise. I get, we know we know Moses our uh, rising bull now. Um, Bar- Barbosa, man, look, I picked Barbosa and I was way wrong. I thought the same thing I thought about Kevin Holland, like Barbosa going to 45 from 55, being such a dynamic striker, he would just give hell to the 45ers. But apparently, he still can't grapple. So, then 10, pound don't, 10 pounds don't matter. Yeah. I mean,. I've been praising Bryce Mitchell, and I've been keeping an eye on this guy since I found out he he could grapple with the best. And he got that twister. It was definitely the confirmation for me that this guy is going places, and he's going to shoot to the top eventually. So I've always been hype about it. I've honestly thought the opposite of 
of you, Brian, where I just thought that Barboza's on the decline, and I honestly don't like him at featherweight. I feel like he's not as explosive at featherweight, almost like the weight cuts just a little bit too much for him. And he's just too old for it now, or too worn down for it. I won't say old, because he's not that old. But he has mileage on him. And I don't think that going to a quicker weight class where people can match up with him better was a good idea. Personally. You know what? You know what? Speed wise, I think uh, you might be right. Like I think he loses a big, a lot of edge there, and then maybe that weight cut is a big deal for him. I think it might take a lot out of him on that weight cut, or maybe Bryce Mitchell just might be better. You know what I mean? It's a lot. It's a lot of factors. Um, I I didn't, I wouldn't say I sleep slept on Bryce Mitchell because I thought he deserved to be a favorite in this fight, and I thought he's uh, I think he's an excellent prospect. At 140 pounds, 45 pounds, um, possibly even a contender with the way he could perform. I mean, he looked good. I just, I guess a part of me felt like if Barbosa can make the weight safely, that he will be just more dangerous because he's going to be a bigger guy with his already dynamic striking. But maybe you're right. Maybe the, the, way, the miles caught up to him. Who knows? We'll find out. But I know for one thing. That 45 pound division is deep, and Barbosa is not an easy out for anyone. I mean, you can obviously wrestle, pillage him if you will, but at the same time, he's always one strike away from ending the fight, whether he's old and worn out or not. I mean, you look at his like career, bro. He's fought the who's who. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So no and matter he's had what, some wars. Yeah, so no matter what, he's always going to be that dude that's, like, really good. I got a lot of love for Junior. Got a lot of love for him, obviously. I had to tear up my ticket, but it's all good. It's cool. I mean, he's been around since, what, like, 2011, 2010 or something. And he's been in the game. He fought everybody. You can say the who's who, man. I mean, and the guys that beat him, if you look at it, really, it was his, his Achilles heel. If, if you say, I mean, if you want to go that route, it's, it's always been guys who have really good wrestling, good grappling. If they put him in. He ain't losing all scrubs, bro. He lost no, to no. Gaethje. No, no, no. Kevin Lee, Habib, Beryush. Oh, no, he beat Beryush. My bad. Dariush. There you Barry, uh, Barry Hughes. Crunch Barry Hughes. Yeah. Captain Barry. Crunch. <laughs> Mosey is always good for it, like one of them. Captain Crunch Barry Hughes. He beat Melendez. Okay. Pettis. Yo. He Damn. lost. He lost to Ferguson. He's mm-hmm. one and one with Paul Felder. Come on, man. Like, yo, he's fought everybody. He beat Bobby Green. Beat. Damn. What's the name? Joe Dunham. I forgot his first name. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he got Joe. subbed by uh, Cowboy Cerrone. Hey, bro. Oh, Evan Dunham. Evan Dunham. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was like, Joe. Yeah, bro. Well, the damage. Bro, he's fought so many good fighters, bro. Like, you can't take nothing away from him. Like, his whole shit is, like, immaculate. He's got a resume. He does. So for no, Bryce uh, Mitchell to go in there and beat him the way he did, like he handled Barbosa. I'm about to say you you said B. That's an understatement. He fucking dominated. Yeah, he, he went, yeah. wait. He marched across the cage, punched him to the ground, and then manhandled him from there. I was like, yo. So this this fight is one of the random fights that I felt strongly that it would go exactly the way that it went. Uh, I didn't think it would be as dominant. Let, let me be a little bit. I mean, honest. damn. Oh, I didn't think it was going to be as dominant, but I did think that Bryce Mitchell was going to take him down and control him. And I thought he was going to get a sub personally, but it is what it is. I mean, Mark, you couldn't warn me, dog, and like, like, hey, man. Tried to, man. I was like, man, he, I, I told you exactly what I said at the beginning of this. During that day, you were like, I don't, I don't think so. I think I like Junior. Hold I on, I had already, I already, I already bet before that. 
Oh, well. Yeah, it was, there. Yeah. I know when you were betting. <laughs> I got to talk to you. Um, on, we got to have a production meeting on Tuesday or some shit. <laughs> that shit was way in the books already. All right, I don't think we have much to talk about with the Dos Anjos and Moicano fight, except for the fact that the ref should have stopped it in the third round. What do you guys think? Um, I thought it was an excellent fight, given that Moicano did it on short notice, and he proved to be a fucking warrior in there because yeah. he got the dog shit kicked out of him. That was – I felt like his corner failed him. RDA let off right. the gas in the fifth round, though. That's why he started looking as good as he did. I mean, he, he probably he, he, I don't think he, I don't know if he let off the gas. He may have, but he, he said he did. May, he may he have. admitted it. He said yeah. he did. He said he, he might have been, but he might have also been tired because he was all he was doing was beating the fuck out of homeboy. I don't believe it. I don't believe it, bro. No. Nope. Yeah, I I think that RDA is a genuine human being, and he literally felt bad. So he, for destroying he, this man. So he was like, he felt bad, so bad that he's like, you know what? You can start destroying me a little bit. I no, no, think no, no, he no. wanted to let he him just, destroy him. He just he, started sandbagging. Yeah, he just started like letting off the gas and it's just like, you know, I punched that eye 1,000 times. I don't think I should as much anymore. I think he just started. It looked like he was sparring in there versus. You know, no, you, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. The fifth round did look like a um a like a light sparring session, but goddamn, bro! Like, what what did he have to do in a third to get the fight stopped? It wasn't like That's I mean, yeah, true. I think yeah, it was it was it Mark Goddard this time. Mark Goddard did tell him, told uh, Moicano at the beginning of the fifth round that he's got like 30, 40 seconds. If he doesn't show him that he's in this fight then he was going to cut it. But what more could have or could uh, Goddard do in that situation? I think Mark Goddard did everything right because to stop the fight, you're supposed to look at the fighter if they're intelligently defending themselves. Facts. He was intelligently defending himself. He did pull up his arms the right places. He did show that he was trying to stay in the fight. The doctor should have stopped it, and the corner should have stopped it. Mark Goddard had the over four and a half rounds, and the doctor did. Because I've seen, I've seen, come on, dog. How many times have we seen a guy just fall to the ground, get slapped a few times, and they wave it off? This right. dude was getting pummeled. I mean, was he intelligently defending himself? Maybe. Sure, I'll, I'll go for it. I'll, I'll even give you the benefit of the doubt and say, yeah. Right? But yeah. he was getting the shit kicked out of him. And we've seen many times when guys were literally like, look, dude, I'm I'm fine. But you waved it off already. I'm good. And I am of the school of I'd rather it be a little bit too late than a little bit too early. But that, to me, was a lot bit too late. Like, he was getting the shit kicked out of him. And I, I would lean on the side of, you know, give the guy a chance to, you know, to – because like you, we've seen crazy comebacks, right? We've right. seen Chet Congo, Pat Barry. We've seen guys who you think are out of there, but they're not. And there are if it's up to the fighter, they're never going to quit. Most most of the guys, right? Ninety eight percent, I would say ninety seven percent of the people that step into that cage don't have quit in them. Right. There might be I mean, there might be a few quitters in there, but most of those guys that get in that cage, they're they're fucking warriors, bro. They're never going to give up. So if you were lying on the, the fighter to call it, that's not what's that's not gonna happen. However, your corner is supposed to look out for you too. Like I'm like, come on, man! Like this is a short notice fight. He just fought. You know what I mean? Like a week, ago, like two weeks ago, maybe. Did Moicano just fight? When he yeah. went, he just had a fight. So you're really letting him take this much damage in a fight that he took on short notice. He's up against. Um, a former champion in RDA, he lost. He's already down three rounds to nothing. I mean, what do you what do you want there? Like, what's the, what, what is there to gain by having him be t- by not throwing him the towel? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, what is there? To, what do you gain? And that's you why, just lose miles on your career. That's all you got. Yeah, from that. Exactly. And you lose. Yes. Like I said, corner was the problem. That's that's one of the worst. Decisions by a corner not to throw in the towel in that point. And I think it's 
it's weird because it's a weird stigma in MMA that corners just refuse to throw in the towel. I think it's only happened like maybe three times in the existence of MMA. This is a common occurrence in boxing where they'll throw in the towel quite often because of they just know that their fighter can't win the fight. And th- this was one of those cases where this fighter was getting his ass whooped and had no chance of winning this fight, and they should have threw in that towel. Also, so, the fight shouldn't have been five rounds, I feel, for Moicano taking it on short, like, short notice like he did. No, I think, I I think, the, five, I think the five rounds is fine. Um, but and I'm also I'm not I'm not towel happy. I feel like um, no man if if it's a if it's an important bout which all of them are it's like every fight that you have is super important for your career. And I mean if it's a title fight, you definitely shouldn't. You only get so many title fights. You know so what I mean? Can, can we blame Islam for this? Well, no. Look at well, no, look. Well, think about think about the Islam Bobby Green fight. You saw how quickly that was waved off. That was the first round. That was in the middle of the first round. The Islam took his back, started pounding on him, quickly waved it off. Could Bobby Green have continued? Absolutely. But why? Like, you know that it, that's over. That, 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 that's compromise. He's done. You know what I mean? The he difference can't. was, though, Bobby Green wasn't intelligently defending himself. Moicano was. And he also didn't get the living fuck kicked out of him either. He took way right. less damage than Moicano took. Moicano got punished. Bobby Green took some uh, some pretty bad shots, but all in all, I would rather be in Bobby Green's spot there than in Moicano's spot. Moicano probably lost a few fights on his career, whereas 100%. Bobby Green, you know what I mean? And that, I think that's like if I were Moicano, I would take a strong look and think about that with your corner man. Like, um, do they really have your best interest at heart? Because like that was that sucked for him. And I was I will go back and. Go, I don't really normally go back on what I say because I usually just speak from my heart and say whatever I, I believe is the truth. Um, but I'm, I'm not. I want to. I don't want to accuse Mark Goddard of being a cheat and saying that he. Like I said that he had the over. I did. I had the under. That's why I'm a little salty about that. I don't. I don't want to like take a shot at Mark Goddard's um, credibility and say that he cheated on gambling or anything like that. Or the um, doctor. I was a little salty about that, but I did think that that fight should have been stopped in the third. And even there's cases you can say in the fourth. But um, what do I know? I am just a fan. I mean, there's other fights that I would have thought that the ref should have stopped earlier that I felt more strongly about that than this one before. Like, the... Ortega fight against Max Holloway should have been stopped earlier. The second two fights with Cain Velasquez versus JDS should have been stopped earlier. So, it's, you know, it's always going to happen because I don't think that either of those guys were defending themselves intelligently. At least Moicano, I can say he was trying to. Not saying it was the greatest defense. Okay. But he was... He was at least trying to lift his arm in the right place. And Wait, hold on, Mark. You wanted them to stop um, a guy's a stand-up war between Holloway and uh, Ortega where they were walking and moving around and shit still? Now, granted, Ortega was getting the shit kicked out of him while he was walking and moving around, but he was moving. But <laughs> Mori kind of moved his hand after <laughs> Well, I'm that's sorry. what I'm saying, though, because that's that's what the refs always say that they're looking for. Right, right. No, I'm just, Intelligent I'm just... defense is trying to get your arm up in the right place. And I feel you like try, because most people just sit there hunched over in dog position and just fucking take the fucking hits going, ref, please stop this. Mike right, Kano no. was like, hey, I, I want to continue, but this shit sucks. And look, and like I said, I'm not to- I'm not happy about the referees waving it off quickly at all, especially in title fights. Like those two fights you mentioned were title fights. Like right. the, like the JDS Kane Velasquez wars were title fights, and the uh, Max Holloway versus um, May um, or take a rest in pieces. He was uh you know that was a title fight. You let them go out on their shield. Don't stop that early. Let they, you only get so many opportunities in in a career to win the championship. Let them go out on your go out on your shield. Don't wave that off at all. If he can move, let him move. Let him fight. In my opinion, 
as a title, if it's a title fight, this was a non-title. This fight didn't even matter. This is a save the they saved the card. Moicano came in on ten days or whatever it was. Yeah, for Moicano, it probably did matter a lot though, because think if if by some chance, some random chance, that when J or RDA took his foot off the gas in the fifth round, he got mm-hmm. a knockout of RDA. That literally skyrockets him to being ranked in what? Lightweight. That was a catchweight fight, right? He's ranked number six. But he would have been It was a catchweight, but they were both lightweights. He would have been propelled into the top ten. Okay. You know what? I can, like I said earlier, every fight. So I would think 10 to 10. Every fight that that every fight matters. Because you only get so many in a career, right? And like you said, the stakes are high. Like if he if he wins, you're right. He that's gonna boost his stock like tremendously. I was I would say yeah, I agree with you on that big time, big time. Y'all ready to get tackled in his main? Let's get it. All right. Look, man, I talked a lot of shit mm-hmm. about. I even called the punch. I said it was going to be a left hook by Jorge Masvidal that would sit Kobe on his ass. I was right-ish. He did it. And, like, what was the fourth round? He uh, caught. Uh-oh. Mark gone. Didn't he get dropped twice? He didn't get dropped at all. I thought he got dropped once. No, no. that It didn't count for a knockdown because Kobe never actually hit the ground. He did hit him with the shot. Kobe kind of ducked, but he got right back up. I mean, it it staggered, it wobbled Kobe, but it didn't knock him down. Mm. It, did, it did, it did, he did rock him, and he did wobble him. That left hook did wobble him, but um, I was way wrong, dog. I I thought that Masvidal had enough power and enough striking like slickness to be able to land something significant, but it's kind of hard to land something significant when you ain't able to throw it. And Kobe. He might have won me over. I ain't going to lie. This dude, he went in there, fought his fight, and did what he had to do to win the fight. So he might have won it for me. But he is officially 1B to Kamaru. I 100% agree with that. And Kobe's always had my respect as a, a fighter as far as, like, his ability is concerned. My only anything that I've ever had with him, as far as like any kind of like whatever, is just the way the the whole persona that he plays. I kind of, but like I, just, it. I kind of like it. I, I don't know. I just I can't. I can't. I I, I, I just don't because I, I know it's an act. So I like yeah. it. I like it. I guess I'm too traditional in how I view it. Like I, I I'm like why do I don't care. I just only I only care about. The in cage stuff, like what you say in a press conference, that's cute, and you might sell some more tickets. I get that, and like some people, like it might make them care about the fight more. I'm not gonna care more. I only care to see you fight. So like I don't that that part don't mean anything to me. I mean like I get it. Like Connor makes a ton of money off of it, and everybody knows that it's a money maker. So I'm not even I don't knock him for it. It's just like not my cup of tea, so to speak. But cardio Kobe, Kobe chaos, that boy. Hey man, he could put on a pace. He could put on a pace. I think he rivals like I would say he's even better because of the output, the pure output than like even the Diaz boys. Because he's his output's fucking insane, yeah. and he he's always on the attack. Yeah, his volume is nuts, and then his pressure with his uh, wrestling too. Yeah, I thought Jorge might have had some kind of resistance to it just because they trained so much together. Yeah, but no. And you know what? Um, Jorge is so prideful that I think he may have been injured and just didn't want to pull out of this fight because he looks so flat. Like he didn't look even at like when he when he was in the cage, he kind of looked like kind of mum. Like you know what I mean? Like he was kind of like had his hands behind. I know I know that's kind of like his thing, his mo. But looking at his facial expressions, which I mean, it's hard to read too much into that, but. He didn't look fiery or like I'm about to get into a fight or oh, probably the biggest fight of my career at this point because that's three losses in a row now. 
And to be fair, it's to one A and one B. Twice to one A and once to one B in a division. So that's three in a row. But it's three losses in a row. But he just yeah. signed that big contract. That's Mark. Where is Mark? Mark, Mark, you back? Yeah, I'm back. Where you? I don't see you, dog. You see? You, you don't see, see me? Is he on the screen? No. Fimo? I don't know. Oh shit! Right now, Mark, you are two floating squares. Yeah. Up, oh, up. Oh, wait. We got Mark. Uh, My back. Hey. There you, go. there you go. Yeah, I had some technical difficulties. Y'all were lagging up and freezing on me, so I just dipped out, oh. came back, and apparently I didn't show back up because <laughs> I just heard that whole Kobe comes in the conversation. So. Yeah. <laughs> What are your thoughts on that, man? We, we kind of weighed in. What's up, man? What do you think about that? Once again, I wasn't actually excited for this fight, to be honest. I wasn't super excited for this fight because same thing with the Bryce Mitchell fight, except I was actually excited for the Bryce Mitchell fight. This one went exactly how I expected it to go. I thought that Kobe is on two higher levels than Masvidal, and the only chance that Masvidal had is to catch him with something slick. And personally, after watching Usman try to beat the living hell out of Kobe Covington and Kobe just kept coming, even with a broken jaw, I didn't think the likelihood of Masvidal just putting him away, putting him away was going to happen. I did get a little bit scared when he put him on his ass for a second, but other than that, it wasn't exactly how I thought it was going to. Kobe was going to out-wrestle him, put on the pace, put on the pressure, and just overwhelm him the whole fight. I I heard you say something about maybe Masvidal was injured or something. I don't subscribe to that. I think it was more along the lines of Masvidal knew exactly what he was coming into, and he knew that he was going to have to do a lot of uh, takedown defense, and he just got worn out from it. I don't think he could keep up cardio wise with Covington. I I think you I mean, I agree with a lot of that. I'm just saying that I, he looked flat. He didn't look um very fleet of foot at all. Like he didn't look explosive. He didn't look slick. He didn't have any he looked like he was just a statue in a, in, a, in a lot of ways. And even in his movement, most of the time when Kobe was walking down, it wasn't like he was doing anything evasive or slick at all. And that's normally Masvidal's MO. Like, he is known for being able to do that. And that's kind of what was the X factor for me. And that's why I say he may have been. Obviously, they all have injuries coming in because it's a fight sports, man. You're going to get some kind of bump or bruise um, in training. I mean, it's kind of it's going to be hard to be 100% healthy in any fight. But... I thought maybe that was the case. I I don't know if he was injured. I'm just speculating, my G. I thought he maybe like had something that was hindering his movement physically. Um, you're saying it was more mental, though, right? I'd say it was probably more mental. I think they had trained with each other enough that he knew exactly what was coming to him, and he was more on the defensive and I just want to land a couple clean shots type mentality. Yeah. I mean, you could be writing that too, because I mean, they do got a lot of familiarity. They they trained together for what? A, well, they were roommates and shit for a while too. So I'm pretty sure they had some. They had they got they had enough of that. Like Mo said, they had a, what the tape of them wrestling for an hour or whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. they used to like just roll together in the crib or whatever where the apartment they stayed in for like 45 minutes. They had that shit on YouTube, and I was like, who's this guy? I didn't know who Kobe was, but I knew who who Jorge was. You know what I'm saying? Street, street stuff. No, 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 no. I knew Jorge from UFC. Short hair. Well, knew- short hair. Goatee. Uh, short hair, lightweight Jorge. Yeah. Well, yeah. Man, he first popped up on, in my radar with the Kimbo shit. Jorge? Nah. I, well, I didn't never. I didn't even know he was about that shit. I just knew yeah. lightweight, short haircut. With the goatee, Jorge. Right. That's the yeah, Jorge, I Jorge I knew too. What I else? knew he was part of the Kimbo things way later on. Like, I had seen the Kimbo fights, and I probably watched his fights too, not knowing that that was the same person. Personally. Yeah, we used, to, we used to call him George. Yeah, we used to call him George all the time. Yeah. yeah. He's Jorge, bro. That's how, yeah. I, that's how I look at it. Like, I knew Masvidal, 
would always <laughs> lose some bullshit ass decision when I thought he won the right. fight. You know what's crazy, man? Um, my whole thought of him previous to this was that he did kind of catch a good spark. Because I don't even know. Like, I had, I, I bet against him against Ben Askren for that same reason. Yo, he went thought, away for a while, though. He was well, like, I thought, gone for however long I know, he was. He did, the reality, he did the reality show, right? Yeah, but nobody knew where he was at. He was just gone. Yeah. We didn't know. Thought, we didn't Listen, know at the time. I did think that Ben Askren, if he can get his hands on Masvidal, it would be a long night for Jorge. That has never happened. So now I'm kind of curious. Would you be interested to see a rematch? Ben Askren versus Jorge? Yeah. He might no. be able, I mean, he might be able to uh, do something if he gets a hold of him. But I don't think he's going to be able to get a hold of him. Why not? I, I, I do agree with that. But the difference between Masvidal, or I mean, sorry, Kobe and Askren is Kobe actually can put on the pressure with striking too to get to his takedowns. Uh, Kobe does a lot of punch-heavy tactics to get to his takedowns. Ben Askren only has takedowns. like, And this is coming from... I was a big supporter of Ben Askren coming to the UFC. I wish it would have been, you know, seven years before he actually got there. Because I think when he was coming out of Bellator was when he was at his prime, and I think we would have got a better Ben Askren, but, you know, we got the Ben Askren that's been retired for When he was supposed to fight years. GSP, right? Yeah, exactly. That's when it would have been entertaining. Blonde hair, Ben? Yeah. All right. He had the short little afro. So, <laughs> what, what, where do you guys see... We'll start with the loser of this fight. Where do you guys see Masvidal going from here? He just signed that big contract, and you know he's getting those pay-per-view points now. So where does he go? He's on three-fight losing streak. I say he welcomes Connor back. Woo wee! Me and Mark was talking about that earlier. Yeah, the ones that make the most sense is Connor or Nate. Obviously, I would also throw Leon Edwards in that mix, but Leon Edwards should be fighting for the title. Mm -hmm. So all those. I don't think he goes away. I feel like um, there's a lot of big fights for him. Uh, he is of draw by popularity. I feel like he's in the same boat as, like, um, he's an East Coast gangster version of Nate and Nick where you know they're not fighting for the title, but they're going to be in a big main event slot because of their they have so much, like, draw. They're, like, they're such a big name. So I don't think um, he's going anywhere. Uh, there's plenty of fights he can have. And there's, they're all going to be huge money for him. So, I think that the big money ones are only Connor and Nate. And then then he gets stuck into a role if he stays at 170, which I think he should personally, where he can just fight a lot of the lower names trying to make a name off of him. And he can look good in some of those fights and get walked on on some of them. I think that's where he's at in his career. He's he's gatekeeper. I see he's gatekeeper as, uh, with money two money fights. options. I yeah. see him as just money fights now. Mm -hmm. Like literally, like Connor, like you guys said, and Nate, also. Mm -hmm. And even if Nick Diaz does come back, but there's a lot of controversy about why he actually came back in the first place to fight. Supposedly, right. it was like the playoff alone or something, but that's just all hearsay with rumors. Well, here's here's a question I want to I want to um present. What's next for Kobe? Because are we gonna go there? He, yeah, like what's next for Kobe? Because like I got a from, great answer. I'm I'm definitely I'm all, what's up. You ready? He gets the winner out of uh, Chemayev and Gilbert Burns. I love it. I like that a lot. That's not a terrible option right there. I think that's the best option because. If Chemayev wins, pending on not. pending on the uh, title fight, right, between mm -hmm. Leon Edwards and Kamaru, if Kamaru just walks down Leon Edwards and just not like washes him, you know what I'm saying? Not happening. Not if, happening. If, if he does, like, walk in the park. 3% chance. 
that could be an end of the year fight if if it is this so many variables though facts because if Chemayev walks through Gilbert Burns in the first round in like three minutes or so you know what I mean we're gonna see it next month if he does that he's already undeniable for a title shot I feel I don't but if he fights Kobe at the end of the year that really makes him undeniable because Kobe is definitely 1B in the division. I think Kobe is the only thing that will make him undeniable be Undeniable because I think even if he beats Burns in the first second of the first round, it doesn't change anything because Burns is kind of chinny. And um, he got knocked out by a jab by Uzma. Come on. Burns, Burns is, is a lightweight. Exactly. He's a, light, a, a lightweight that doesn't cut weight. So that, would, that proves nothing to me. It's a big step. It's a huge step up in like ranking wise competition, but matchup wise, I don't think this is a matchup nightmare for him at all. This is a very favorable matchup for um, Hamza Chimaya. Oh, I feel it's like easy work for him, bro. I think so too. Um, I think the only thing that I think that um, would give this fight any juice is the fact that Burns has jujitsu, so he won't. He will be able to um, if he gets taken down. He he, he won't be like a fish uh, out of water. He can he got good jujitsu, but um, I think Chimaev is the bigger guy. I think he has a better striking, and I feel like Burns might be a little chinny in my opinion. So like I think um, it wouldn't surprise me the least bit if he gets knocked out in the first round, not even a little bit. Um, and I don't think I, that's why I don't believe that him like Chimaev. When I say him, will be undeniable with a an impressive win over Burns because I feel like this is a matchup favorite for him. This is he's a this is a matchup he's a matchup favorite in this in my mind. The only thing that makes it not is because that number next to um Burns' name makes him in some people's mind a bigger um draw. I don't care about the numbers next to your name. I'm more worried about like who you are as a fighter. And to me Gilbert Burns is a lightweight. He's a lightweight that doesn't cut weight. Chamaya fights at middleweight. He's the middleweight that comes to 170 pounds. So, and he's phenomenal. I mean, you, you, we, we've seen him, you know, be pretty tough line in his career so far. He looked impressive. You know I'm the not, crazy thing? I'm not on, a, oh, I'm not on the Chamayev hype train yet. I still think he's pretty unproven. And, but I think we'll, we'll get to see that with Burns. But what's up? The crazy thing is, like, we got Leon Edwards finally fighting uh, Usman, right? Usman. Mm -hmm. He's finally fighting Newsman after all this the whole delay of everything. And Gilbert Burns is tied up with number 11, Chemayev. Mm -hmm. But we also have Vicente Luque versus Bilal Muhammad coming up. Yes. So where do these guys go, man? Because Muhammad just fucking... He bopped... Uh, whatchamacallit? Wonder Boy. He bopped him. And Luke had problems with Wonder Boy. You can't do MMA math here at all. Mm -mm. So, what happens? Say Luke wins and Gilbert Burns wins. They're not going to fight each other. Wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Are you saying that. Because where's. Burns is number two, right? He's number right. two. Okay, so if Burns wins this fight. I think it's Burns Kobe. That's slam Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Man, no, Luke, I think Luke and Bilal have nothing to do with this. But if Luke I, and Bilal win, what do they do? Because they're both on like some streaks right now. You say if Luke and Bilal win? No, no, no. If one, if of, them one of them win, they're both on some streaks. So right if, now. if Bilal Muhammad wins, yeah, because you got these options right now. If Gilbert Burns wins and Luke wins, what happens? Burns, no, Burns Kobe. That's no slam dunk. They're gonna run then, that fight. Oh wait, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah and you think Kobe. Luke would get the shot at the title, depending no, on the winner no. of uh, Leon Edwards and Usman? No, I think Luke and um, both Luke and Bilal Muhammad are still at least one more fight away. At so least they one, do one more. more. So Luke least, will probably fight Chimaev, maybe. Maybe, yeah, yeah. I think they're at least one fight. Maybe, maybe two. Or the I'll loser. As, or the loser of the Usman one. and. Uh, 
Yeah. You know, see, like, it's so competitive right now at this top right now. Yeah. That is great. I, I don't see either Luke or Bilal Muhammad getting the title shot based off what they've done so far and their matchup that they have. I don't see anything coming of that except for they might get a shot at a number one contender eliminator. That's it. That, that's how I see it, too. So, I honestly think that they probably get loser. Is of Kobe the title gatekeeper fight. for a title shot? Kobe is the Kobe's in the same the exact same spot as Robert Whitaker. Correct. Yes. Yep. So if you beat Kobe, you get a title shot. Yep. Correct. Good luck though. But you're not beating Kobe. Good good luck though. Good luck though. Also and, correct. <laughs> bro. And, he, and, you're not, and you're not beating Whitaker. So like for me, I feel like um Ch- Chamayev is not undeniable, even though he looks unstoppable at 170. He's not undeniable with a win over Burns. I like to see over, that. Fight. With a, with a win over Kobe, for sure, undeniable. I don't give a shit what the other guys are doing. I don't care what Bilal was doing. I don't care what Luke is doing. So, I, winner of Gilbert Burns and Chamaya fights Kobe. Winner of I think I think winner of that gets Kobe. Winner of that gets gets another crack. If say um, Kobe wins, he gets another crack at um, the champ. Makes sense. Yeah, assuming assuming he beats Leon. But that's I mean, assuming like he beats yeah. Leon, yeah. Assuming he beats Leon, because who knows? Like, what if Leon wins a close decision? That's a run back, of course. Yeah, that's run back. You know what I mean? What if so he like, wins I'm, by knockout? Uh, I would he's assume probably it's still, still a run back. I must have assume it's still run back because of he's a long reigning champ. The yeah. only way it's not going to be a run back is if Leon just puts on a fucking clinic against him, and it's just so one sided that they can't justify a run back. Yeah. But Usman's one of their biggest stars right now, so they might even run it back even with that. I think I was going to ran back Masvidal. I was, was, was going to right say, I was going to say with um Martin, you, Usman is arguably the biggest star in the UFC right now because you don't have Francis and Izzy is obviously the the next guy, but um, Izzy's obviously the next guy under Francis as far as being a big star in the UFC. But one thing about Usman that no one talks about is Usman plays ball. He's not arguing about contracts. He's not doing any of that shit. Usman is fighting whoever they line him up with when they line him up with him. There's none of that. So the UFC is in favor of in, in the Kamaru Usman business. So right. if, he, if if he loses that fight, then he's going to get a rematch, I, I would assume. The only knock on Kamaru I can say against those other guys is Kamaru, to the actual hardcore fans, is amazing and probably one of the biggest stars, period. But to the casual Kamaru is not that person. They would much rather, like, 100%. Talk. Yeah, because he don't talk as much. He don't, talk. he don't make the big deal. He he will respond back to the guy talking to him, but he doesn't make a big deal in the media like a lot of the other guys do, star power-wise. As much as, as heavily invested as Mosey is to the 145-pound division, that's how I am with the 170-pound division. That's like always the division that I kind of care about. Bro, this um, division is deep. I'm yeah. paying attention to it's, it's from only 145 to 170. I'm paying attention to them. Yeah, I I feel um, like this is the best. This is the best range for all the attributes. You get the size, you get power, you get speed, you get agility, you get all the things. But the main reason with 145 is because it's always like the same dudes. That's how I see it. You know what I'm saying? It's the, mm-hmm. like in 145, they also have a 1A and 1B guy. But given the 1A and 1B guys are very, very close in, in their fights, even though the yeah. score is mm-hmm. 2 and 0. You're talking about Max, Max, Max Holloway and Alexander Vol- Volkanovsky, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Or okay. actually, I should wait, wait. I should have said that the other way. The, because the, Volkanovsky is the current champion. And he's currently. He's the, the current one. champion, but. He's the 1A. Yeah, I'll say they're one know. one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look, I feel you. I know you're a fan. I ain't, I ain't gonna, gonna, gonna take no gotta give smoke respect. away from I, Volkanovski because he's really good. Gotta give respect yeah. to the guy who's holding the belt. Yeah, um, he just got the, nu- the judges nod. That's all I see it as. Oh, big facts, big facts, big facts. I, I, I like Max in the rematch too. But from there, it's like um, they smoked everybody else below them. Period. Yeah. And it's not close like the other divisions. That's why I'm paying attention to the featherweight division. Like that, Martin, uh, got, Umar. My, my division's always been 
always been lightweight. 155 has always been my favorite division. Just because it, there's never been an extremely dominant champion at 155. Yes, everyone's going to say Habib, blah, 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 whatever. I know he didn't have the record as some of the other people, and he didn't have enough title defenses. If he would have stayed longer, he could have became that person. And I 100% believe that he could have easily became that person. But he doesn't have the, the credentials at, because he walked away a little early. But I agree with, I agree with that. You think if they had that, one more fight, 30-0 and 0 would have done it? One more title defense or, you know, a couple more legacy fights because... I know that he beat the best of the best when he was champ. I'll agree with that. He did. 100%. But the other 27 fights, there's a lot of suspect. Facts. Let's be honest. So No lies detected. Right. So that's the only reason why I don't give him the credit that he he probably deserves. I'm you, you remember admitting it. You remember seeing that boy in Orlando one time. <laughs> With the furry hair and shit, bro. We seen him in Orlando one time. I ain't know hey, who man. the fuck he was, bro. Look, right. who's this guy? I, I woke up this morning and chose enthusiasm. Mark woke up and chose to speak the truth. Right. I, I feel like um, with the 55 pound division, you're right, man. There's never been a guy who just straight ran it. Nobody. Like I can't think of nobody, man. Like even the think about all the great champions 155 pound division, and nobody. Has what's the most title defenses like four? How many did Khabib have? Three. Khabib had three. Three. Yeah, yeah. and I think uh, Connor, Dustin, Justin. Connor didn't defend shit. No, no, no. I'm oh, saying, no. Uh, oh, he, no. He Connor, like, Dustin, wait, Justin. That's who he defended it against. I was like, we counting intrums. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. No, no, no. He, I'm saying, he defended it against Connor, Dustin, okay, and Justin. Okay. All right. So that's oh three. hell no, Connor didn't defend nothing. He got stripped of all the titles, bro. He might have did that say, shit first, but he got, he ain't defend shit. Yeah, because I, mean, I would say if you count that as defense, then Izzy got five, right? <laughs> if you don't count that, no, 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 bro. I'm talking about the actual defenses. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. That Habib had. Fact, he had three. Fact. He had three. All right, so let's get into um, let's get into our uh, final segment before we go I to mean, Ashley. Uh, wait, wait, sorry. Yeah. I have to segue with this. He's tied because three is the most. You had Frankie Edgar uh, did three, BJ Penn did three, and who else was there? Ben Henderson had three. I was, about, I, I was about to ask, how many did Ben Henderson have? That's what I was about to ask because I know he defended against Frankie, uh, Nate twice. Diaz. No, no, no. He fought Frankie twice. He won the title off him. Oh, right, yeah. And then he defended it against Frankie. And then I know he fought Nate Diaz. Who, was it Gilbert Melendez? Or am I tripping? I, it was Gilbert Melendez. Yes. He, he beat Gilbert. And then he lost mm-hmm. it to uh, Anthony Pettis with the double arm bar. Yeah. And yeah, Anthony Pettis did not defend it. He was wearing a gold yeah. chain. <laughs> Got the Wheaties box. Yeah, I think just uh, Pettis had Ben Henderson's number. But you also said right. BJ Penn defended it three times? Yes. No way. But I don't think it was consecutive. I know that that fool destroyed Kenny Florian. <laughs> and Sean this, Shirk. And Sean Shirk. But I think that was the win the title. This might this might be considering the No, because he never defended the Welterweight title either. Mm. BJ? I don't know what PJ I'm gonna look it up. I have to know now. Remember, BJ was a lightweight champion, and he uh, tried to be the first double champ. Mm-hmm. And GSP yeah. said, "No, nah, player." Mm-mm. Well, yeah. you know, you, you know, gotta stop that. He said, "Hey, funny? you gotta stop that." Do you think that BJ fought in the most weight divisions? Because he fought a heavyweight too, right? Yeah, he got pieced up by Leoto. But I'm saying I he think could- that. Uh, Diego Sanchez fought in the most weight divisions. Oh, what, wait. you remember Hold when on. he kicked Diego Sanchez in the head? That I was for the that. title. He split him open. Yo, that's that's two at least, right? Well, yeah, no, Sean that's Shirk two at least, right? Sean Shirk. Uh, no, what was that dude? Uh, 
I, didn't he beat Jens Joe Pulver Daddy? The, Joe Daddy? Wait, was, wasn't Jens Pulver? He beat Ooh. Jens Pulver to, for the title, to right? win the title, I think. What was the dude's name? Joe Daddy. Joe Daddy. Joe Daddy. Stevenson. Joe Stevenson. Joe Stevenson. Joe Stevenson. So, I'm like, I got so many fingers up now, man. Like, I don't like. I think Mark's right. I don't think it's. I don't think it was consecutive. I think he lost it in between that though. Was it BJ yeah. with the hair? He lost or bald head BJ? Because you got to remember, he also <laughs> got stripped of the title to go to uh, bald head BJ or BJ Pride with the hair. Was, that was a what? Which one? <laughs> Which one? Which one? Was uh, it? BJ with the hair never won the title, did he? No, he won. no, no, no. He did. He did. He, you I, talking I, I, about I Slim one. BJ? No, BJ Balding BJ won the title from Jens Pulver. The BJ where he was uh okay. smoking Cal Uno he had, in them. Yeah, he, the, he had the comb over, bro. Oh, that's young BJ. Balding BJ was there. Balding BJ, but bald BJ. No, I, I bald think, BJ. Um, he only put uh Matt that was a, asleep. That's bro, that was a savage though. That was the one that licked the blood. Oh yeah, that was a savage BJ fan. Yeah, yeah, he was the Hawaiian, but, bro. That was the whole I, listen, hold on. I think BJ might have the most weight divisions because he fought 170, 155. Didn't he do 145? Yes. And heavyweight. Didn't he do middleweight? It, I wasn't, think he did middleweight. it wasn't heavyweight in the UFC. I don't think though. he did middleweight. Not in the UFC. But. I mean, no, not just. Diego, I mean, Diego fought 85, 70, uh, lightweight, featherweight. So. Tie. That's yeah. I guess that's Ty. Yeah. And Diego anyway, is fighting this weekend. Just so you guys know, he's fighting Kevin easy. Lee. In fact. Oh, oh yeah, no, and yeah. Eagle. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. Ex- I'm gonna watch that. I'm gonna watch that um, whole thing. They're in Miami, right? I don't know where they're at, but I think it's in Miami. Where is it? I think. I think. I think it's I in Miami. Know. I want to know. I really do. Or or South Florida. I'm not sure. But um, while we while we trying to figure that out, I like we'll, Kevin. Ha- uh, not Kevin Holland. I like Kevin Lee. Yeah, I like I Kevin know. Lee in that too. Ke- Kevin Lee for all the money. Um, yeah, this it is, is in Miami. It is in Miami. Hey man, um, yeah, this is you know how you do like the three point bets and what, this is a max wager. You can do whatever your max is. This is the max. Put max I, on it. I just don't see Diego winning this fight, bro. I see Diego getting stopped uh, in the first. I mean, dude. Yeah, this is. A, I think he's outmatched in this one, bro. Pretty much. I mean, he he's tough. Diego's a legend, but um, he's a little outmatched. Kevin Lee can disappoint though, so who knows? Yeah, who that's what I'm saying. It's like one of those. Think like I'm thinking hard this. on it. Like I'm like, is Kevin Lee gonna like fold? <laughs> who but fuck knows? Man. It's Diego though. You know what I'm saying? It's. Just, but I feel shit. you. Like, I feel you, but I don't feel you. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like. Is what's gonna fold first, Diego's already heavily seasoned chin, or Kevin Lee just no? These are one of these things you just can't call, man. You got nah, really, no, 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 no. you got Bro, a crystal let's... ball. What what do you got? You you could predict. No, you future? can call this one. Let me challenge you, my know. uncle, Uncle know. Joey Diaz, on this one. Listen to me, you cocksuckers. You take your money and you put it on Kevin Lee. You understand me? You don't ignore that old bullshit about how tough it is and all this. No, no, no. You put bro, the money on Kevin Lee. Diego Sanchez was hanging upside down getting beat up, bro. That's what I was about to say. Who is in Diego Sanchez's corner? That motherfucker's And Batman. then I will tell you my choice. He's Batman, bro. I don't give a fuck if he had Khabib in his corner. He's, he's Batman, bro. He, had, no, he I mean, hung upside down and took an ass whooping. He can you, ass you know who can revamp his career? You know where he should start training? With James Snap Krause. Down City. James Krause. What would you uh, say? Go. I said Snap Down City. Let's go. Oh. Tony Ferguson's gym. Oh, you Let's know go. What? Mark might have hit gold, hit gold Man. there. I think their crazy personalities Bro, will them bring them two together. Back. Stop it. Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. Someone's going to die Bro. in that training session. They might, no, no. They might be best friends, bro. They might, like, they That's do one cool. move and be like, yo, did we just become best friends? You want to do karate in my garage? You want to go wrestle on top of a tire? <laughs> Man, I, I'm going. I will watch. Hey, I don't guys. watch, bro. I don't think I've ever watched any reality TV. I will watch that. Besides the Ultimate Fighter, watch I will watch. 100%. I will watch. I will watch them too. I, I want to count down to every fight. Yes, 
I'll, I'll and watch Diego and Tony for sure. Yes, that's what they'll probably be saying together. Yes, yes, I'm yes. yes. Sign yes. me up. Sign Yo, me up. Tony Ferguson teaching Diego Sanchez how to break dance, bro. I'm in. He's gonna teach him how to ankle pick at the very let least. Let me let me in there, bro. I'm in. Let me session with my boys, bro. Let me let me just get one breaking session with them, man. <laughs> Please, I'll teach them. How about that one? They'll teach me I'll, some shit too. I'm like, bro, hey, man. Teach me some jujitsu shit. You know what I'm saying? Hey man, you want to learn some jujitsu, you know where to go. I know where to go, but I'm saying, but you know I want to hang out with them. That would be fun. <laughs> that would be, that'd be fun, man. Actually, I don't Let's even see. want, I would probably just kick it with them, just normally. Like, we're just on breakdance shit. Yo, let's just go chill. You know what, Do though? Some real moves talk, in the cut real quick. I feel like, you know I, mean? I feel like, Let's I, go feel like Tony, I feel like Tony Ferguson would be the best person to just go to, like, some random. Like Arizona desert and talk about aliens and shit with. And he's wearing his shades, right? Facts. Wear but hair. the whole time that you're talking about it, he's in a suit running fucking ten miles in that desert with the fighting gloves on, bro. Like a Tekken <laughs> character. Right? Yo, so let's 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 get into this um new segment we're gonna do for for future shows. We're gonna do something a little stock market action. Fighter stock, you know what I mean. Um, obviously, in the stock market, um, it's bull market or bear market. You know, when the things are when it's going down, it's bullish. I mean, it's bearish, and when it's going up, it is a bull market. So we're gonna do raging bulls and falling bears. All right. So pick two fighters from this card who you feel fits in those categories. Mo, me right now. Who's your raging bull and who's your falling bear? Falling bear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a tough Who's one. Who stock, stock is on the decline? That's a tough one. I'm not going to touch nobody on the main card. How about that one? Okay. I'm just going to go with what I saw. Falling bear, right? That's what it is. Mm-hmm. And rising Falling bull. Raging bull. We can do rock. We can do. You know what? I think maybe rising is better. Well, whoever like, is raging, falling, raging, yeah. falling might be uh, Nezuku. Okay. Just because Fair. he's got a lot of potential, but this might hold him back a lot. But okay. rising wise, is this Umar Nurmagomedov, and I Ooh. said his name properly. We got Dagestani on the list already. Keep watching this guy, Umar. Not Omar, okay. Umar. Keep watching this guy. He ain't Omar from the wire? Nah, that ain't Omar from the wire. It's Umar from the Dagestani courts. <laughs> the bear infested mountains. What's up, uh, Mark? Who, what, what are yours? What's your, um, what are your picks? Originally, I was going to go Umar, too, because he's definitely someone to watch out for with them kicks and that wrestling. Just but on a, just do it. On a side note, because I, I am going to go with Umar, but on a side note, I will say that Kevin Holland already has stock in him, but it's going to rise so much in 170. So you, you, you're picking um, Kevin Holland for your agent bull? Your agent yeah. bull? Okay. Who's your bear? My bear. I don't really know if you can call him a falling bear, but I'm, I'm actually going to stay on the main card and go with... Masvidal. I know that he is a superstar, but his stock itself is just not as high. With the three losses in a row, yes, they were against the greatest competition, but he was not looking him. We lost Mark again. Oh, he said they were not looking impressive. I'll finish his sentence for him. They were not looking impressive. I think he... Well, Well, we'll let Mark... Finish that sentence. Let's give him a little Back second. In a second. I, I, I do agree with that. You can bro. hear me, can't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what's going on with my connection today. It's it's a little rainy, dog. You uh, it is a little cloud cover. What you got? Satellite? Nah, I got good internet. I don't know what's going on. Personally, usually, I'm usually the one with the internet issues. So. Oh yeah, man. So I, you were saying Jorge Masvidal was. 
declining. Yeah, stock-wise. Like, I know he just signed that new big deal. I know that he is still going to be a star, especially to the casuals. But I do think that with this loss and the two previous losses, take down his stock in the fact that he will never be champion. Journeyman. And he is now just going to be a journeyman, like you said, or a money fight in the sense of nobody against other people that also will never be champion. How m- Do you know my uh, how opinion. many fights his uh, contract goes for? It, it was supposed to be a big deal, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter how many fights he has. I think he's only going to do a couple more. Like I think he's going to do the money fights and then dip. I think the main reason why they signed him to a long-term contract was like that is so he doesn't dip and go to bare knuckle or something. Or fight Jake Paul in them. Correct. I mean, he's 37, so... He First is thing, technically in his prime. You get what I'm saying? But MMA prime is so different. Everybody peaks at different times in their life. Like Anderson, he was prime time Anderson right now at this age. Until he got yeah. old, and then we all saw what happened. But the same thing we've said in the last two cards, and even on this card with um, Edson Barboza, he has the mileage on it. The unfortunate thing for Jorge, George, whatever you want to call him, is people didn't take notice to him till the back end of his career. He's the always casual been a killer. Him. The casuals yeah. didn't know who he was. You remember we watched that fight, uh, him against Ally Quinta, and they booed Al after he got the decision win, and we were like, "How did he win?" You remember that, Mark? Yeah, was that your crib? I, and I was like, "He got robbed." What just happened? It was one of those like one o'clock fights. We was hammered at like three thirty in the afternoon, watching that. Yeah. And we was mad. We were so mad. That's all I Yo, so, so, so mad. I'm gonna take um. So for my for my raging bull, um, I'm gonna go with one of the ladies. I'm gonna take Mrs. Rodriguez to the dance as my raging bull. She's on um, on. She's now what her fourth fight win streak. And yes, she, her stock is thumping. I think she's knocking on the door of a title shot. So she's going to be my raging bull. For my fallen bear, unfortunately, it's the homie, uh, Junior Edson Barbosa. Um, he's, it's, he, what is this, two fights in a row, two fights now for him? Uh, three. Three? Three fights in a row, lost. Um, I thought it was two, but... Damn, that's even. He's even worse. His, yeah, his record at featherweight is two and three. Two and three. Yeah. Okay, I I know he lost three in a row. Damn, but um, if if it is, that's even more gross. But I feel like his stock is falling in a already tough one hundred and forty five pound division. I feel like um, yeah, Edson, if if. If it was a stock, it would be the needle would be going down. So, I I have an honorable mention. I was gonna say um, Yan Shaonan, but she's only got two fights and she's in a very talent. She's still at the top of her, um, the division of her division. She was like what number four going in, and she got two in the row to uh, is it what is it Sparza and now um, Rodriguez. Yeah. So oh, I'm correct. And I that. apologize. Uh, he did beat Burgos, so it is two two fights. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. He okay. beat Burgos. Got it. Right. Sorry, but still, it's yeah. like he's still very competitive at featherweight. Absolutely. I, I, this was a tough decision for me to pick him as the the fallen bear because um, I just look at I'm looking at the projection of like when I'm making this pick. I think Xiao Nan will fare just fine in their next fight, whereas I don't see Barbosa unless he gets a very favorable matchup. I feel like this is we're we going to see more of the same. If he fights I mean, a grappler, man, it's about done. That's, so. what, I, right, that's what I mean. I, I mean what is he gonna, who is gonna, else is he going to fight really at 45 except grapplers? We just mentioned some grapplers coming in. I wouldn't mind seeing him fight a uh, zombie. Even though that's zombie's not, fighting for the title, but still, I wouldn't mind seeing yeah, yeah. him fight. 
that fight's so far out in the future, though, um, for both guys. Um, like, obviously, for rankings wise, and or even um, Calvin uh, Qatar. Yeah. Um, and one thing we should get to, uh, we didn't do any uh, Ashy Knuckle moments. You have an Ashy Knuckle moment in this fight? On this card, I mean, sir? Mo? Mm. No, but yes, but no. All I can say one. is maybe... No, I ain't got one. The only one I could probably say is uh, Kevin Holland like this. Okay. I mean, like, the punches. like to no, 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 not really. No. Mark, you got one? It's not a moment. It wasn't mm-hmm. a fight ending moment, mm-hmm. but it pretty much showed the trajectory of the rest of the fight. And that is Bryce Mitchell with that knockdown of Edson Barboza. That was the beginning of the end. Really good one. I thought Mo was going to pick that one. That's interesting. When you said the no, but yeah, but no, but yeah, because like, it didn't end the fight. I thought right. it I thought that's what you were debating on. That's what I was thinking, but I was like, nah, it was, it is what it is. He did knock him on his ass, though. Yeah, and you don't expect that. That was a, that was a clean right hand. Um, my my Ashy Knuckle moment goes to uh, Jalen Turner for uh, that nasty little shot he put on Malarkey. I thought that was um, the Ashy Knuckle moment of the card for me. Shout out to Jalen Turner. Hope your welterweight. Um, well, your lightweight now career goes well because I won't be paying attention and betting on you. Um, but with that being said, y'all want to call us a wrap, my boys? On that note, All right. wait, zip it before, up. wait, before oh. we zip it up and zip it out, we gotta give a shout out. I mean, uh, first of all, I want to say, uh, appreciate you to our 40 whatever 44 all 44 subscribers on youtube we appreciate y'all thank you thank you appreciate it if you like this content and want to hear more hit that subscribe button hit the like button while you're on the way out leave a comment if you want to interact we will interact and follow us on twitter at ashy knuckles mma we have we post content all the time we go back and forth and we would appreciate your support also, shout out to all the uh, the non-video listeners, the podcasters, the ones that are listening through Spotify, Apple, and whatever. Thank you, guys. We appreciate all of y'all. We are just like you. We are fans of the sport, and we like to talk about it. So this is – Ashy Knuckles has always started off like for the fans – by the fans this is what we're about so we just want to show a little love back to on um, the people who do listen man thank you i mean i didn't we started off with an audience of one and that is mosey's wife <laughs> when we were <laughs> us talking trash uh in his living room watching fights then we got an audience of two with kevin tagging along sometimes but now we got 46 like and hey and, and the rest of people around the globe listening in on um streaming and on streaming platforms and um that don't have video so appreciate y'all on that note though zip it up and zip it out zip it do that bye bye